Hello, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Termel, and tonight's 10th lesson is about debt money. Now, if you've seen Zeitgeist Addendum, or Money as Debt, or you've heard social creditors complain about the banking system, or the American Monetary Institute with Steve Zarlinga complaining about debt-based money, they all say the problem is debt-based money and made worse by interest. But they say the problem is debt-based money, and I say that's wrong, and in today's lesson, we're going to explain why there's nothing wrong with debt-based money, and that's not the problem we should be focusing on. Okay, in order to prove that debt-based money isn't a problem, we're going to have to resort to the use of poker chips. And if you don't know how poker chips work, well then just drop this video because you'll never get this. But for those of you who do, now imagine that we all come to the game and we all, instead of bringing cash, we all bring our car keys. And we put our car keys down as collateral so we can get the chips to play. Definitely that is asset-based money based on the asset, the car keys. Now, of course, you could also bring gold to the bank, and that would be gold-based money and another asset-based money. Now, of course, you could go to the bank someday. Let's say we're all on an island fishing. We left our cars back there, and we don't have our car keys. What are we going to do? We want to play poker. Well, we can all simply cut IOUs and play on debt. And everybody buys in for a certain amount of debt, and we all play poker, and our debts go up and down. At the end of the night, we settle out and no different than if we'd all had our car keys put up. So there's no actual difference between pledging asset or pledging debt to back up your tokens, your chips. Let me give you an example. We're told that debt-based money causes problems. Well, let us for a moment assume that in order to save the whole country, America, or all of Canada or the world, uh, Bell Telephone decides they're going to help out. I pointed out that, look it, I know that I owe you a thousand bucks for my Bell telephone bill. And my neighbor over there, he owes you $400 for his Bell telephone bill. Well, listen, I owe him $400. So why don't you let me go to negative 1400 on my bill and put his bill to zero? Well, there's no difference to Bell Canada whether or not I'm going to pay them the 1400 or he's going to pay the four and I pay the thousand because we're both good. Therefore, Bell Canada could allow us to do trades using our debt-based Bell Canada dollars. And it would work fine. So that's my point again. Now, all these monetary reformers, they all go, oh, it's the debt-based money that's the problem, and it's made worse by interest. And they focus on fixing the debt-based money, which they think is the problem, and they put the interest on the back burner. Well, I'm here to prove that it's the interest, the growth of the debt that causes the problem and not the medium, the debt itself. So yeah, now you know, when you hear the word debt-based in their critique, they don't know what they're doing. They're not focused on target. Now, this is a strategic error, yes. Uh, tactical error, well, tactical error is something you can correct and eventually get to the goal, but a strategic error usually you can't. Let me give you an example. At golf, a tactical error would be when you're using the wrong club. You know, you'll be shooting high and low, but eventually you'll get to the hole. A strategic error is when you don't aim at the hole and you'll never get to the hole. Well, in this case, all of these monetary reformers, where you hear debt money, you hear them say, oh, the bankers are creating money out of nothing, and they're hiding it, and they must be hiding it because it's terrible. Well, casinos create chips out of nothing, and that's not terrible. It's when they're issued into circulation that's important, and what's the collateral backing it up? But the fact that it's created out of nothing doesn't make it terrible. So again, focusing on the wrong thing, which isn't the trouble. They also will say, oh, this new money goes into circulation and it's unbacked, and therefore it drains all of our money and causes inflation. And that's what people think shifting inflation is, new money unbacked. But do you know anybody who can go get a loan at the bank, which is new money, and not have to pledge collateral for it? And even more collateral than the loan? Some people two, three times the collateral value of the loan. 
I don't know anybody who can get a loan, well, maybe rich millionaires, who can get a loan without having to put up collateral. So when they go, oh, adding money into circulation is going to cause inflation by debasement of the money because it's unbacked, all new money borrowed into circulation from banks by ordinary people is backed up by the collateral they play. Another mistake these monetary reformers make because they're decrying shifting inflation. They're all believers that there's too much money in circulation. And Ron Paul figures we've got to find more gold. He's an advocate that it takes more yellow rock to correct the malfunction in the computer bank software. No, it doesn't take more yellow rock. That's an old, antiquated idea, and it never worked in the past, and it isn't going to work now. So, same with the capitalist conspiracy, uh, Edward Griffin, great movie, and at the end he says we need more yellow rock to save ourselves. So let's all pray for a golden asteroid to hit the world till we get more yellow rock so we can put ourselves to work. Well, that's a pretty stupid reason to wait around for money because you decided to only let yellow rock be money. Why not use silver rock and copper rock and all sorts of other rocks too? to start, or why not paper, or why not credits? So, the medium of the money isn't important. It's the interest on the debt. It's the positive feedback in the banker's books. Everybody borrows their 10. They get their $10 and they walk around with it for a year. When they come back to the bank, he says they owe them 11, because his debt grew to 11. Well, the guy's only got 10. The problem's obvious. If you're all alone on your island, you're foreclosed upon. But if you got a neighbor on your island, all you got to do is get one of his. And you could pay your 11, get out of debt, and they'll foreclose on him. And when they have millions of borrowers all in the same boat, well, you don't really notice that a bunch of people are always being squeezed out and losing all their money and all their stuff so that the other guys can pay their interest, the excess. That's how mortgage death gamble works, and it affects the brain. It's like musical chairs. People who play musical chairs with money all their lives, you say, oh, new world coming with no interest, where the rich help the poor get rich too. They go, you're dreaming, can't be. It'll always be terrible and crooked and theft and ugly. And you think, yeah, a guy who's been playing musical chairs all his life just cannot conceive what it'll be like when we add an extra chair so everybody's got one. All of a sudden, no need to elbow because you wouldn't want to go hungry tonight because everybody's got a chair. So, balancing the debt with the money would be just like balancing the people with the chairs. There'd be no more need for that criminal intent to survive. And, of course, that's why it's a paradigm shift that many people can't see. Jesus said when it comes to interest, they're going to forever be hearing without hearing and seeing without seeing or understanding. And that's my experience, too. But these lessons, you can keep listening and listening and listening. And as soon as you finally realize how you can make poker chips inflate by charging interest, and you can chop, stop poker chips from inflating by no longer charging interest, well, now you realize how we could have a time-based currency system run by our national governments, which allow everybody to have a well, good-paying job. So I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, telling you that if you hear words like Debt money, you know they don't know what they're talking about. Gold standard, they don't know what they're talking about. It's a time standard of money that we have to enshrine to enable mankind. We don't need the bullion brokers getting the monopoly again like all of history. And so those are the key words. Gold standard, debt money, they don't know what they're talking about. Now again, it's not like the average people who are actually aiming that way at the hole. At least these guys are close, and they're trying. They're just missing that last little improvement that focuses them, and that's why I'm so en enthusiastic that there are so many people in monetary reform out there who decry the Fed and decry the Fed's control and decry their evils and the abuses, even if they're not quite sure how to fix it yet. It shouldn't be too hard, and it should be much easier for them to catch on to the answer than it does for people who've been turned in the opposite direction all their lives. So who knows? Let's hope that the monetary reformers wake up, realize that the time standard of money is better than the gold standard of money, and that we certainly don't need to worry about whether debt or asset is the collateral base. We only have to worry about the damn growth of debt or asset debt, the usury. And, of course, that's what the equation with Minoplast Transform shows. 
The malfunction is a function of the interest rate and nothing else. Turn interest to zero, money works as perfectly as poker chips, backed up by collateral that can never inflate. I only want to make sure that it's backed up by time as well as other collateral too. So I'm John the Engineer Termel trying to liberate the debt slaves by making their time as valuable as gold. Thank you.